All right, so I'm about to do a reaction video. I have not seen any of this. Uh, it's about a seven minute, eight minute video somewhere in there. I'm gonna let it play and then I'm gonna like kind of talk about it afterwards. Apparently there's like commentary already on it. Uh, and I don't want to like overlap it with my thoughts when I don't really know what's even going on. So, uh, you guys are awesome. Any support you drop on this is greatly appreciated. Shout out to Techland for hooking me up with this footage. This is kind of a last minute thing. I knew they were doing an event today. Uh, I don't know what they're going to show from that, but if there's anything different from this, I may also react to that if you guys would like it. Uh, if you're excited for Dying Light 2, just destroy that like button. It is probably my most hyped game since 2015. So, uh, you guys are awesome. Love you all. Let's get this. Hey, everyone. We've been quiet for some time, since, like the rest of the world, we had some unforeseen hurdles to clear. But the wait is over. Let's dive into the open world of Dying Light 2. The last slice of Dying Light 2 showcased the mission from the main storyline. You get after those fuck. You saw how your decisions influenced the narrative and notably changed the environment. This time, we want to give you a broader look at the game and a sneak peek at some of the things we'll be talking about in upcoming months. In Dying Light 2, you become Aiden Caldwell, an outsider trying to unravel a tangled mystery from his past. Its trail leads him to the city, probably the last bastion of mankind in the world. Oh, shit! At first, you feel like this intense, brutal place will tear you apart. But then you meet the Night Runners, veteran survivors who helped people in better days. By the way, I'm Hakon. You were a Night Runner. You used to help people, remember? Night Runners are gone. Finished. A myth. And although it's not entirely clear you can trust them, you need allies in the dark. And these are the modern Dark Ages. It's been 15 years since the apocalypse and the world has changed. The old civilization has fallen, but a new one has been built on its ashes. People fight desperately for scarce resources. The rules are broken and weakness is punished. She's innocent! Three factions struggle for position in the city. Survivors pride themselves on being able to adapt to any circumstances and cobble together safe zones almost everywhere. Peacekeepers, loyal soldiers, who want to impose their version of law and order and trample all in their path. Renegades, ex-prisoners serving their ruthless colonel, seeking to become sole rulers of the city. Where is Waltz? Make him tell them. Use these factions to reach your goal. Help or harm them to reshape the city to your liking. Just remember, each faction contains complex characters. Nosy Parker, ain't ya? Got some kind of bad habit of yours? So, will you follow cold calculation or your heart? The bazaar needs good people. Help us and you'll find a home here. Some in the city offer no chance for an alliance. Bandits, outlaws, and common thugs live only to plunder and kill, plunging the streets into chaos. Yet, nightfall scares all of them equally. Darkness changes the rules of the world. As the light fails, monsters crawl out of hiding to prey on the poor souls caught outside the safety of UV rays. Hordes of infected pour into the streets like decaying lava. The deadly spawn of 15 years of mutation and evolution. Exploit the 
city's verticality and flee to the roofs. Uh. Though even there, you are never safe from swift and deadly virals. Uh. Uh. Or even greater threat. Uh. Uh. Yet night brings opportunity as well. Nests rife with infected during the day now lie empty. To explore them, you must tread carefully. But those brave enough to face the terrors of the night can loot a jackpot. Luckily, you have all the tools you need to survive. Your extraordinary parkour skills allow you to navigate even the most treacherous terrain. On the roofs, you can count on your parkour acrobatics to save your life. But often, you'll have to face your enemies head on. And then you have to be smart, resourceful, and determined. We've worked hard on the essence of our combat, making sure swinging a big, meaty weapon is fun, satisfying, and well executed. But even the most brutal fights can be tactical as well. You have multiple ways to hone your skills toward the gameplay style that suits you best. It's up to you if you focus mostly on mobility and parkour, or aggressive, blunt force combat, or a crafty approach where the tools you've created get the job done. Every ability you learn can be a game changer and possibly a new favorite move. Things move fast and quick in Dying Light 2. Each moment matters. Each move could mean triumph or defeat. Choose your actions and friends carefully. Everything you do in the city can reshape the gameplay environment, change the course of the narrative, and decide the fate of the city's residents. But most importantly, you decide your own fate as well. You're about to turn. Make sure to stay human. All right, so a lot to talk about, a lot to take in. Um, let it play again. I like how it says some scenes have been edited to avoid spoilers, but then they talk directly about the story and the three factions. But uh, I don't think that really spoils anything. Anyways, December 7th. Game, we've actually got a firm release. That's a Tuesday as well. So most games come out on a Tuesday or a Friday, usually during the fall. I think I said fall right when he was falling down. Um... Usually during the fall, a lot of games come out on Fridays, so it is very unique. I like that they're not tone deaf to know that, hey, we kind of went missing after this gameplay demo we showed that was extremely hyped. Where everything, your choices make, you know, the story different. I, this is the part I really like. The fact that you can fly around. Look at this. I'm getting like Far Cry vibes right there. I don't know. The wingsuits. All right, the story. So I, I, I like that they talk about there's three different types of factions. You take uh, Aiden is now the new main character, not Kyle Crane, like the first game. I don't know if he'll make an appearance or not. I mean, he lived, so I don't know. Um, I, I, I definitely like how the game still goes for verticality. The zombies look really awesome. Nighttime is obviously still like a very scary thing. The game is not steering away from its origins. I like that. We got a new thing called the Night Runners. They say you don't know if uh, you can trust them or not. The gra I'm going to say that the graphics look really good. And I like that it's coming out on last gen and next gen. I'm also slightly worried that that might hold some of the stuff back. I think 
I don't think it'll be like Cyberpunk where, you know, it released on so many things that it hindered some of them. But I think that this game is going to be optimized. The first game runs great on, like, the base PlayStation 4 and stuff. So it should be fun. So it says 15 years since the apocalypse. That's... I don't know if that's since the first game or or what. Like, they, I don't know when the apocalypse happened in the first game. I know, like, you weren't there in the very, very... Because it's like there was some time passed from the opening cutscene in the first game to when you're actually playing as Kyle Crane. So, so you got survivors, peacekeepers, and renegades. I wonder if that's going to be a thing where it changes the ending. You know? It, it could be. I would probably be a survivor, to be honest. I feel like the other two are very... Or a renegade. I don't like peacekeepers. They seem like like a law enforcement type thing. Trying to control everybody. So maybe there's multiple endings. I don't know. But they say each faction has complex characters. Meaning that if I choose to go with like survivors. Then maybe uh, I'll, I'll never see the other two. Like maybe there's story missions. That's a pretty cool part right there. That little thing swinging and taking all the zombies out. I don't know. I don't know. But you, wouldn't you have a, a fourth faction also, the Night Runners? Even though they're not really a faction. So will you follow cold calculations? The graphics look incredible. I don't know what this is showing on. I think it said PC. But he, I feel like even on PS5 or even the Series X, I mean, both those consoles are going to run this game tremendously. I would I would imagine 4K, 60 frames, no, no problem, you know. Maybe even 120, which I might play this on PC, to be honest. Because I, I think the last one I played on PC as well, and it looked incredible. I like how it says, like, the night time, like, the night, nightfall. It's like, uh, it scares all factions equally, you know? I'm just wondering, like, it seems very familiar, yet a whole new experience. The verticality of the area, the different types of zombies. And I'm going to tell you. After watching what Techland did with the first game, where they, once it released in 2015, you, okay, most, let me give you, like, an idea. I've been making videos on YouTube for 11 years now. Not to date myself. I'm an old man now. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. It's, it's like, I've been around the block long enough. I've met so many publishers. I've flown to places, you know, and, and met a lot of people that have worked on games, and... Over the years, you kind of see, like, behind the scenes and everything. I liked it, the flashlight right there also. Very cool feature. Kind of blind him. That's scary. <laughs> um, but I, I, I just feel like to see what goes into a game and then a lot of times these single-player games will come out and then that's it. There won't, there'll won't. be a few post-launch updates, but they, they stop really going after it. You know, they move on to the next project. With what Techland did with uh, the first Dying Light since 2015, I thought this was a really cool feature. Or not feature, but... The Art of Survival. It's going to be different skill trees, probably. I like some of the... Like, the parkour looks amazing. The first game did it so well. This game looks like the wall running is back. You know? I don't know. Could you wall run in the first game? I can't even remember now. It's been so long since I've played it. I might have to go back and mess around with the first game to get kind of familiarized with everything. But I just feel like... Oh, the bounce pad. They're showing off the parkour right now. I like it. The missile drop kick. Let's go. I just feel like they're going to update this game constantly. It's got it's going to be a game that comes out and then they're going to support it for the next 5 years probably, you know. They still so they just had an update for Die Light 1 like like a few weeks ago, I think. Yeah, the combat looks insane. Graphics look incredible. I'm going to tell you guys something right now. Most games don't seem to come out in December anymore. Um I know Cyberpunk came out last December, but before that, let me tell you, when I think about a zombie game in December, the one thing I can think about is Dead Rising 4, even though it was the last one they ever did, uh, something about zombie games in December, just, I feel like this is going to be awesome. I, I can't wait. 
That's when it's slow too. It's gonna be. The, it's probably gonna be the only game that's in December that's like major. It's gonna have the whole month to itself. It's smart. They're not releasing at all. Like you know, like twenty games come out just before Black Friday. They're smart. They know what they're doing. So, um, even if they was to delay this till early 2022 to polish it, I would not even be mad. This story just looks insanely good. I hope to have early access. We'll see. <laughs> um, but my favorite part of this whole thing is the release date. I think that. We all want the game. We know what the true potential of it is. People wanted my thoughts on it, so I figured I would just make a quick video talking about it. And again, shout out to Techlen. I, I, I woke up today and I got a, a tweet from somebody. They said, or a, a, a DM actually. And they said, hey, do you want some early footage of Dying Light? I think we're going to show it today. And this is like an extended look at it. And I was like, sure. And so I kind of jumped on it. Wanted to do like a quick reaction. So it's like Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, uh, PS4, PS5, and PC. I mean, that's exactly what I was... I was I, I'm kind of surprised. Because I also was thinking maybe they're not going to release it on last gen because they're delaying it. So, I mean, I don't mind that at all. I think that if it can come out for the for like the base Xbox One and the PS4 and it actually runs smoothly, um, I feel like it's going to look and play a lot like Dying Light, like the first one on those so I think that they're gonna use the same engine but they're gonna tone it down a bit on last gen I think that PC obviously is gonna be the best but um the fact that it's on PS5 and Xbox One X I'm or not, not One X I do there's so many Xboxes I, I, I get confused sometimes the Series X um I think it's gonna look great on all those so I'm excited hope you guys are too I know that it's not till December so we got another you know almost six months or so from then and uh if i get any kind of early access i'll let you guys know uh but for now this is it you guys are amazing thank you so much for watching and uh, that's kind of my initial thoughts on the dying light to stay human which I, I like the new name i like it i wonder why they changed it though it's like a rebrand type thing uh i don't know i like it a lot so you guys are awesome talk to you soon peace out guys